GHG sources. Sources of GHGs. This table shows the major sources of human-related greenhouse gas emissions for each of the six greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide. The most abundant greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. Throughout the world, the vast majority of carbon dioxide emissions result from the combustion of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and natural gas. On a global level, deforestation is also a major contributor to carbon dioxide emissions. When forests are cut down or burned down, the carbon that is stored in trees is released into the atmosphere as CO2. Deforestation is a significant problem in developing nations like Brazil and Indonesia because large swaths of forest are lost each year without replanting. A third origin of carbon dioxide emissions is in industrial processes, such as the production of cement. These are physical or chemical processes that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Methane. In the US, the largest source of methane emissions is livestock. Livestock produce significant amounts of methane as part of their normal digestive processes. The second largest source of methane is the decomposition of waste in landfills. This methane is called landfill gas. Fortunately, it can be captured and used as an alternative energy source, for example, to generate heat or electricity. In fact, many landfills are already capturing the methane they produce. In addition, landfills that capture their methane emissions voluntarily can create substantial amounts of carbon credits. Another large source of methane emissions is the production, processing, and distribution of natural gas. Natural gas consists primarily of methane, and during extraction and production, and piping it through large systems, it often leaks into the atmosphere. Nitrous oxide. The primary sources of nitrous oxide emissions are agricultural soil management, fossil fuel combustion, and the production of fertilizers. Soil management is by far the largest of these sources. Nitrous oxide is released when the soil is tilled, and these natural emissions are increased through the use of fertilizers. As for fossil fuel combustion, the volume of nitrous oxide emitted depends on the fuel type, combustion system, and pollution control devices used. Currently, the use of gasoline in automobiles is the second largest combustion-related source of nitrous oxide emissions. The production of fertilizer causes significant nitrous oxide emissions as a byproduct of manufacturing nitric acid, an essential ingredient in synthetic fertilizer. High GWP gases. Hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride are potent greenhouse gases, and some remain in the atmosphere for thousands of years. Unlike the previous three gases, these three are all man-made. Emissions of these gases are small relative to other greenhouse gases, accounting for less than 2% of total emissions in the United States. The majority of these emissions are associated with their use as cooling fluids for AC systems, as insulating substances for the utility industry, or as ingredients in cosmetics. Global emissions by sector. At the sector level, the largest sources of global GHG emissions are electricity and heat, land use change, such as clearing a forest for farming, transportation, agriculture, and industry. This diagram also shows emissions by end use or activity in the middle column. In terms of electricity and heat, the majority of emissions result from residential buildings. Surprisingly, the production, 
and not just the use of oil and gas also require a significant amount of energy, which means that oil and gas are responsible for much greater emissions than many people might suspect. When it comes to land use change, deforestation is responsible for more than 18% of emissions worldwide. This was a major topic at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen in December 2009. The resulting agreement, known as the Copenhagen Accord, establishes provisions for developed countries to pay developing nations to reduce emissions from deforestation. In transportation, the vast majority of emissions come from ground travel. This is because automobiles are a highly inefficient form of transportation. In fact, the efficiency of the combustion engine has only marginally improved since the Model T first went in production 100 years ago. This graph represents a global view and will change from country to country according to the country's economic makeup. End of recording.